Uh, good afternoon. Uh, today we have uh, Lisa Lehman, professor at the University of Southern California with us. And we'll start the interview with Lisa. Lisa, welcome Thank to Lusofna. Uh, my first question, it's exactly about your, um, your role as a professor at uh, the University of Southern, uh, Southern California. How do you see this role of being a teacher there, specifically in that school? Hmm. How do I see my role? Well, you know, I'm a full-time filmmaker and a part-time professor. Um, and I, I guess the role of a professor, it's many things. It's really, for film students, for a film professor, it's to help people recognize their intuition and their creative instincts and to help give them a voice, help them find their voice. It's partially giving information, it's partially inspiring them, it's partially cheerleading, sometimes it's being stern, to challenge, to challenge them, right? To do their best work. Not just supporting, for example. Not just being supportive, no. But we faculty talk about that all the time, as I'm sure you guys do too. I mean, you have to find that, that magic balance of being supportive, but also being very challenging. Yeah, because the real world is really ferocious. In a sense. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 film school is a precious place in a way where you can experiment and, and play with your form and find your voice in ways you may not have the luxury of doing when you're out in the professional world. So that's good that there's room for experimentation. But also giving people a realistic sense of what the professional world is, is really like is important. Of course. Uh, being a documentary professor, do you think it, this helped to master your craft as a filmmaker? Yes, I, this is such an interesting question when I, when I saw it. It's, um, I don't know if it helps you master your craft, but it keeps you on your toes. And as I'm sure you know, teaching makes you have to bring it up from your instincts into your head and, and to organize the material in a certain way. So it makes you learn it deeper, makes you have to be able to articulate it. So it's challenging, right? And my, t my students keep me on my toes. They're always... They're, they're always at the cutting edge. They always know the new cameras, the new equipment. They get sometimes very seduced by the new equipment, as opposed to thinking about storytelling. Um, and they have um, antennae, they have radar for what's really bubbling up in the culture. Often before, the films my students make are about things that maybe a year later I read about in mainstream press. Yes, but the, in other hand, um, while teaching, mm -hmm. You, you have the opportunity to rethink some concepts and aspects of your uh, way of filmmaking or making, making films. Yeah, do I rethink? I suppose I do. I mean, it all becomes a synthesis, right? We're all informing each other. My students, I mean, hopefully I'm inspiring my students and they're inspiring me for sure. You never entered the field of uh, fiction films. No. So. To you, what is so compelling about documentary? What is not compelling about documentary? I mean, what is not compelling about the real world? I, I just find the real world more interesting. You know, it's, um, I love seeing fiction films. I don't feel any impulse to make them. Um, if I wanted to be very psychoanalytical, uh, there were a lot of family secrets in my family when I was growing up, which I didn't even know. No one said these were secrets to keep them, but kids can intuit things. And at some point I realized as I was in film school and starting to go from fiction into documentary, that I was making documentaries are a way of me finding my own truth. I can't say the truth because there is no the truth, as any documentarian knows, but, um, but it's a very cathartic process for me to dive deeply into a subject and to shape what I find to be the truth. Um, so, in, <laughs> uh, my, my next question, in this, you, you already answered mm. partially, but uh, let me do it again. What, what do, you, do you find as inspiring, level, what's so inspiring in reality subjects? What is so inspiring? Um, Reality is so unpredictable. Real people are usually, you can never put real people in a box. We, our challenge is to make dramatic films using the, um, the tools of drama and storytelling, right? Protagonists, antagonists, conflict. You can never fully do that in a formulaic way with documentary because it's always, reality is always leaking out and it's always challenging you. It's like a big puzzle. So I, I find it really 
stimulating intellectually, creatively, artistically, soulfully, to have to take pieces of reality and put it all together into, a, into this puzzle, solve a puzzle, solve my own puzzle. I'm creating the puzzle and solving it at the same time. So documentary, we can say it's more adventurous, for sure, than fiction. Mysterious I, and adventurous. <coughs> I, I don't want to uh, make exclusive claims about it being more anything, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it's more that for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to you, what is the very essence, the very essence of mm -hmm. documentary? The very essence of documentary. That's a that's a tough question. That's like um, what's the, the the joke about what is pornography? I can't define it, but I can tell you I know it when I see it. So this may be the same thing with documentary, right? I mean, the classic definition, at least what we use in the states, is John Grierson, the English classic documentarian. It's the creative treatment of actuality. That's almost anything. Yeah. Right. What, whatever it means. Whatever it means. Well, it can mean anything, right? It can mean the act of killing and reenactments that are written and collaborated with, with murderers, or it can be purely observational films like Frederick Weissman, or very first person films like Sarah Polly, the stories we tell, activist films. I mean, that's what's so exciting about documentary. It can be all these forms. I do find, I just said to you that I don't like to contrast fiction and documentary because it's just better for different people. But I do think that the form the form and um, the way we make films seems to be exploding in new and interesting ways in documentary, more so than in fiction films, at least right now. Yes, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. Um, what do you think it's necessary to become a documentary maker? What, what does it take to become a documentary filmmaker? Uh, a sense of honesty with yourself, with the people that you're interacting with? an ability to see reality on multiple layers, multiple levels, what's happening on the surface, what, what's psychologically motivating people, what, what are the politics. Um, you have to be a good storyteller. I think at some level you have to be comfortable with technology. There's no way around it. I'm a bit of a technophobe myself, but I have to learn you know, the new things, the new equipment. Um, I don't know, what do you think? What do you think is necessary? Yeah, I agree entirely with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, with the new technologies available nowadays, mm -hmm. do you think that anyone can become a filmmaker now? Okay, so this is a very tricky question. You're asking me, can anyone become a documentary filmmaker now? Because we all have smartphones. I just found out there's, there are film festivals for films made with smartphones. That blows my mind. Okay, so on one hand, sure, anyone can make a film, but what does it really come down to? It's not about the tools, obviously. It's about a sense of character and storytelling and drama. So I think, you know, our faculty discuss this all the time. Can you really teach storytelling? I, 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 sometimes I think, of course, and sometimes I'm not so sure. Or if it's just for people that have a sense of story, can we help nurture them and get them to... Um, to find their own way of telling stories. So I think that's the most important thing. And, and, and to, to, to learn, to understand how to be a good storyteller and how to use cinematic tools, visual, sound design, visuals, and the new word that I've learned here at Doc Nomads and Lusophona, dispositive. <laughs> yes, it's not the tool that makes the, the craft, of course. Yeah. Tell me about some impressions of you as a visiting professor at the Doc Nomads course at Lisbon? Um, I'm knocked out. I'm amazed and impressed by how international the scope is of Doc Nomads. I mean, the seven students I had, one was from Mexico, one was from Bhutan, two were from Austria, one was from Hungary, one was from the Philippines, and I'm forgetting the other country, but that, that's, that's amazing. As an American, that's amazing. And um, you guys have created an astonishing web. I mean, the, the three days of pitching where our students pitch to three different countries simultaneously through web conferencing, I can't stop talking about that to my colleagues at home. I think this is fascinating and you're bringing the future and bringing it into the now. It's, it's, it's the way of the future and you're doing it now. So I, I find it very impressive. Do you see it makes sense 
to have a master course dedicated solely to documentary, like Doc Nomads is. Of course, of course. Why wouldn't there be a master's class for documentary? It's 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 its own art form. I mean, I think we borrow, um, we use every technique of narrative storytelling just in the service of documentary. So sure, of course, it's important. I think to specialize if you want to. Yeah, I'm asking this because it's Doc Nomads or a master course mm -hmm. solely for aimed to documentary. It's still is rare. Oh. In Europe uh -huh. and probably you know in all the world, there are some faculties that have these masters, but it's not not so many as right. expected. Right. I'm saying this because documentary is probably one of the most popular genres in the world. Many filmmakers do documentaries, mm -hmm. but it's a bit strange to me that it it, it steals inside the the film studies. Uh, courses in general. Mm -hmm. Documentary, it's a sort of a course subject yeah. inside film studies and yeah. not, not a film study for, for its own. It's true. Yeah. I mean, I, I, there are probably more in the United States, I can only think of Stanford off the top of my mind, that you specialize in documentary. Mm -hmm. And at USC, people are very, it's very mixed. You can elect to specialize in documentary, but, um, but I don't know any students that make only documentaries at USC. No, I think it's important. I mean, this is documentary is a, is one of the ways to understand the world around us, to work for social justice, to explore questions, um, existential questions, to explore art and form of cinema. So it's it's important to have a master's in this particular form. About the master classes you did here at the <coughs> school, mm -hmm. uh, one of the master class was, was about ethics. Mm -hmm. Can you just briefly uh, tell us? Why ethics is so important on documentary? Oh my gosh, um, that's a good question. I wish I <laughs> had prepared for that. Um, I, I find that ethics, ethical questions come up at every stage of documentary filmmaking and you're dealing with real people's lives. So it's not just an actor you're hiring and paying them and then sending them home at the end of the shoot. Um, how we treat people, what we say to them, how we portray them, um, what our relationship with them is, um, how we portray them in the film, how the film affects their lives after the film is screening on television or in theaters. These are, these are all really important and tricky, tricky things to be thinking about. And I think it's not ethics, ethics and documentary are not discussed enough. So I think it's very important. I feel like almost there should be a course in it. Anyway, you were talking about ethics towards uh, the subject. Mm -hmm. But uh, what about ethics towards the audience? Ethics towards the audience. I mean, that's a much more ambiguous area, right? I mean, we talk about this contract we make with the audience. I mean, I. Uh, I mean, I think uh, you could. I mean, I think if you trick your audience and they, they and, and then you reveal it to them, they can get angry at you, or they can think that was very clever. So it just depends on how, what you're doing, right? If you're trying to pull one over on them and you're being dishonest, you're leaving out information that's really a bigger part of the story, then I think those are sloppy do documentary ethics. But if you're deliberately doing something to make a point and you reveal this later on, maybe that's very clever filmmaking. It's all about your intention, right? And your execution of it. Another masterclass you'll do today to be about documentaries as social impact. Yes. Can you just give us a glimpse about what will be? Yes, and I'm very curious how this works in Portugal and in Europe, but in America, because I think this is a very much an American, part of our American personality, let's say. But um, many, not all, but many documentary filmmakers are motivated by social justice, exploring something in the world that they feel needs a wrong that's being committed. And um, there's a long tradition in the United States of using films in the service of creating social justice. So I'm going to talk, I'm going to give examples from, oh, the, the, the most obvious example is The Thin Blue Line, which Errol Morris made, which um, actually got a man who was in life imprisonment, right? Released from jail. Okay, that was, that examined our justice system, so it had larger repercussions. But to The Invisible War, which was nominated for an Oscar, <clears throat> and was about um, what's called America's Best Kept Secret, which is sexual assault in the U.S. military. Um, that film has been screened in Capitol Hill for Congress. There's legislation being proposed. I mean, there are 
um, people are saying it has changed the, con the national conversation about this. So um, films about animals, Blackfish, my own film, One Lucky Elephant, is making people rethink um, the way that we think and how we treat animals. So there's, it's, it's, it's uh, not the only kind of documentary. And, and there's many different levels of social impact in documentary, from raising awareness to engaging audiences, to changing attitudes, changing behaviors, changing laws. I mean, it's, it's vast, the possibilities. And, and, and those are kind of coming in a certain order, right? Yeah, and this was in all along the documentary history, one of the roles of documentary precisely, like change minds, change attitudes. Um. Yeah, though, I don't know, was Flaherty trying to change anything when he made Nanook of the North? Well, at that time, <laughs> Flaherty was not aware about what was documentary. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it was perceived as a documentary, but that's right. He basically reenacted the yes, whole thing. Right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Thank you very much, Lisa. Thank for you. giving this interview and for being with us during these three weeks at, Lu at Lisbon. It's really been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I hope to come back. I hope to bring a film back to um, Doc Lisboa. Doc Lisboa. Doc Lisboa. It would be wonderful yes. to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay.